Welcome to Van Life with Steve, and thank you for joining me for some fast times on the way to Rapid City, South Dakota. We'll start things off with the Minutemen Missile Silo National Historic Site. So the Minutemen Missile exhibits are made up of three different areas. Here's a look at a section of the Berlin Wall. We'll see a cooler section of the Berlin Wall when we, when we get to Las Vegas. There's an interesting quote about peace through strength. Here you can see some information about the Minuteman missile. And this poster here has a schematic on the missile silo. So the Minuteman Missile Historic Site is made up of three different areas. There's the, I guess, the visitor center that has exhibits and things like that. Then you have the lodge control facility where you get to go into the lodge control room. And as I try to find it on the map, you finally have the remaining Minuteman Missile Silo in South Dakota. And a funny thing is that the control center is actually connected to the missile silo by an underground wire. And each control center would be wired to 10 different silos. And so when they were working out the nuclear deterrence, they had thought that, hey, if we put a thousand missiles out, then the Soviet Union would have to, they'd also have to have a thousand missiles. But then they realized, no, wait a second. All you have to do is check out the control center. And to do that, you only need a hundred missiles. So because of that, they developed the plane that can fly over the missile silos and remotely lodge all the missiles. So now we have the missile silo site itself. This glass covering is not part of the hatch. This is, the hatch is half open, and this is to enable visitors to peer down into the missile silo and see the actual Minuteman missile. And there is a dummy warhead on the missile. And we'll peer down the silo here. You can see the top of the missile there, it's 57 feet tall and I think about 6 feet in diameter. The main thing about it is it's a solid a fuel rocket, so it doesn't have to be fueled up, it can be lodged at a moment's notice. And there are no longer any active missile sites in South Dakota, but there are in North Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming. And this missile carried the W-56 warhead with a 1.2 megaton payload, which is a very destructive device unless, of course, you duck and cover, if you believe the government. To illustrate the difference between fission and thermonuclear weapons, here's a comparison of the Nagasaki bomb, if it would, were to be dropped on New York today. And the second screenshot is if one of the Minuteman II missiles detonated in New York today. And you can see there's quite a big difference of the damage area. The first one, you know, the Nagasaki bomb wouldn't reach Central Park if the bomb hit in lower Manhattan, whereas the Minuteman missile two, it would vaporize lower Manhattan and it would also, the damp, the effects would extend all the way past Central Park. Next up we have the South Dakota Air and Space Museum which is located at the entrance to Ellsworth Air Force Base that is near the town of Box Elder which is just to the east of Rapid City, South Dakota. At the entrance to the Air and Space Museum you have the B-1 Lancer which is a supersonic bomber that is set to be replaced by the B-21 Raider, the latest stealth bomber. But the difference between that and like the B-52 is this one is supersonic. As we look around the museum, if you're enjoying this content, I'd appreciate it so much if you please give me a like. Please subscribe if you want to see more, and don't forget to turn on the bell for notifications. So unfortunately, at the Air and Space Museum, as we pan around, you'll see some hangars, and they have inside exhibits, such as an F-16 simulator and a Minuteman Missile simulator, and those are closed for renovations, and as I make this video, I believe they're still closed, so unfortunately, we won't see those. But we'll look around at the rest of the outside exhibits.
The main thing I got from visiting museum is I never really thought much about the letters in the name or what have you of, of the plane and I never thought that they actually stood for something and so F for fighter, B for bomber, and for missile, that kind of makes sense now. The massive plane we're looking at here is the B-52 Stratofortress, which is, I think, our nation's largest bomber. And this thing's been in service for over approaching 70 years. And I believe it can, one of these things flew 12,000 miles without refueling. And you can see the rear armament there at the tail of the plane. This missile is the Nike Ajax surface-to-air missile, so it's a SAM. And here we have a Minuteman II missile that you can observe in its entirety. It's a big looking missile. And we'll finish things up at the Air Museum with a look at the Titan I intercontinental ballistic missile. This was America's second ICBM behind the Atlas. This is a liquid-fueled missile. And we'll finish things up with a look at the Rapid City Presidents, which are located between Main and St. Joseph Street. And you can kind of just make a circle and see all the statues. As we look at a statue of President Obama here, this is a really neat thing that Rapid City has. I wish other cities would have something similar. But yeah, they have statues of all of our former presidents, up to and including Barack Obama. And some of these statues get really intricate, as you can see here with Franklin Roosevelt. And it was just a cool thing. I don't quite know if they're life-size or not, some of them seem life life size, and then others maybe not so much. But yeah, these are just you know in uh, you know in downtown Rapid City, they have all of these statues of all the former presidents, and you can just stroll along totally free and admire them. And it was definitely one of those pleasant surprises to find when you're doing van life. And we'll go through some pictures of the, not all of the remaining statues, but most of the remaining statues. Uh, I tried to take pictures of any presidents in my lifetime or notable presidents, and I included some others in there also. But here, we'll just take a look at all the remaining ones. For some reason, I seem to like this Harry Truman one the best. So we'll take a quick look at Art Alley. It's this uh, graffiti alleyway that they have down there. It's pretty neat. 
And as we head off to the next adventure, I want to thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks. Bye.